All right, so here I am going over the uh, 2015 test, 5.1 to 5.7. I'm going to go through it kind of quickly, and I just downloaded the key from the website. All right, here we go. <clears throat> what is the period of the function? All right, so we have a graph that's tangent, and remember, tangent um, has a default period of pi. So the period is going to be pi over b. Well, b is the coefficient of x. So notice it's not in standard transformation form, but it doesn't need to be. If you want to, you can factor out a 3 pi fifths from a 4 pi sevenths, but let's not and say we did, because that's the b value. So the period is going to be pi over 3 pi fifths. Okay, and now we can stay pi, stay, change division to multiplication, and flip 3 pi fifths to get 5 over 3 pi. You can then put the pi over 1, the pi's divide out, and you're left with 5 thirds. So that's answer choice E. There you go. It's just the coefficient of b, or the coefficient of x, sorry, is the b value. You don't need to put it in standard transformation form. Now, the function cotangent is the same domain as which of the other trig functions. That one you should know because you've got all the graphs memorized. Cotangent has vertical asymptotes at 0, and so does cosecant. That's easy. You should know that. Okay? But there is another way. If you want to write the definition in of cotangent in terms of x, y, and r, it's x over y. So cotangent is going to be undefined when the denominator is 0. That's when y is 0. What's the only other trig function with y in the denominator? Well, it can be x in the numerator. It has to be r, right? And what's r over y? It's cosecant. So functions that have the same denominator, there's always two. They can pair up. Two with y, two with x, two with r. They always pair up. Those are going to be the ones that have the same domain. So there's your little trick. All right, three, if uh, f of x is arc cosine of x, what's f of negative 0.5? That's just the same as what's arc cosine of negative 0.5. I think that was on our quiz, okay? Arc cosine's PVR, remember, is um, the sun on the horizon. So it's positive in quadrant one, it's negative in quadrant two. So we need to get to the angle in quadrant two over here that has a... A cosine value of a half. That means it's going to be the negative half. The y value is going to be square root of three halves. That's your pi thirds reference angle. So to get there in quadrant two, it's got to be two pi thirds. Okay? So I'll just explain that one problem. I'm not going to get into explaining everything about all the inverse trig functions. You should, should pay some time and go through and memorize the principal value ranges. Okay. Now a fun one. Find the domain of cosecant. Well, remember, cosecant uh, has a vertical asymptote at zero, so this is the easier of the two. Because it starts as sine, sine is sahala. Remember, it's your axis points that turn into horizontal asymptotes when you flip it. So cosecant has a vertical asymptote at zero. We do need to put this into standard transformation form. So let's factor out our 3 pi fourths, and that gives us x minus. So off to the side, we started with pi thirds. We're dividing out a 3 pi fourths, okay? That's the same as pi thirds times 4 over 3 pi. Your pi's are going to divide out, and you get 4 ninths. So that's minus 4 ninths. That's really all we need, okay? So here's what the domain is. It's going to be the set of all x, such that x cannot equal our starting vertical asymptote, which was at 0, and then we shifted it right 4 ninths, so plus 4 ninths, and then plus how often do they occur? Well, for cosecant, they occur every half cycle. So the period of cosecant is 2 pi over b, and b is 3 pi fourths. So again, we'll stay change flip. That's 2 pi times 4 over 3 pi. Put that over 1. Pi's divide out, you get 8 thirds. So that's the period. So what is 1 half of the period? Well, multiply 8 thirds by a half, and you get 4 thirds, and that's how often they occur. So plus 4 thirds n, where n is implied to be an integer. It says it right there. So, of course, you don't need the 0, so it ends up being 4 ninths plus 4 thirds n, and that's answer choice A. All right, cosecant has 1 at 0, so does cotangent. Um, cosecant counts vertical asymptotes every half cycle, so does secant. Okay, secant has a vertical asymptote, the first critical value, and then every half period after that, 
And then the other one would be uh, tangent has one at the first critical value, which is at a half cycle plus every uh, full period. And the first critical value, by the way, for secant is at a quarter cycle. So we, we summarized all that. But anyway, that's how you do that one. What's the range of this graph? It's a secant function. So remember, it's going to be negative infinity up to the old low value for cosine, which was d minus the absolute value of a, bracket, union, bracket, d plus the absolute value of a, the old high point for cosine, to infinity. So let's identify. There's our d value. There's our a value. So it should be negative infinity up to 7 minus 3 is 4. Union 7 plus 3 is 10. Now, that's an interval notation. You could also say less than or equal to 4 or greater than or equal to 10. And that's answer choice D. So be careful not to choose the negative 4 because your eyes can drift up there, but it's positive 4, right? All right, that's number 5. Hey, number 6. This was like uh, number 14. We're going to put that over 1 to make it into a ratio. We draw a little triangle. And uh, tangent ratio is y over x, so that's 3x squared over 1. The hypotenuse, then, is the sum of their squares. That's 1 plus, and be careful. This is where you can mess it up. It's 3x squared quantity squared, which is 9x to the fourth, not 3x to the fourth. You've got to square the whole quantity. All right, and now the secant is r over x, so that's the square root of 1 plus 9x to the fourth all over 1, or just the radical. Okay, and notice here, if you forgot to square the 3, but you remember to square the 4, you're going to get answer choice E. E for error, and E for E. I'm glad I'm not you. All right, be careful, be patient. Parentheses if you want, right? 3x squared, quantity squared. That's 3x squared times 3x squared. When in doubt, expand it out. There you go. All right, arc sine of sine of 18 pi thirteenths. Oh, these are the fun ones. I like these. So here's 13 pi thirteenths. Half of 13 is 6.5 pi thirteenths. So we're counting by six and a half. So that's going to give us 19.5 pi thirteenths. So 18 is going to live over here. And that's not in a PVR. Quadrant uh, three never is. So the reference angle is 5 pi thirteenths. And now we look to see if sine is pot because we're taking the sine of that angle. Sine is positive or negative there? Well, it's negative there. So the other quadrant where sine is negative is quadrant four. And remember, we get there by going straight down that amount. So it should be the negative reference angle, negative 5, 5, 13, which is answer choice D, as in, dang, that was fun. All right, how about this one? Cosecant of inverse tangent of four-thirds. Four-thirds is a legal tangent ratio. Wouldn't be a legal sine or cosine ratio, but it's legal for tangent. So here again, we're going to draw some generic uh, triangle. Uh, that's y over x. Oops, sorry. y over x is 4 over 3. By the Pythagorean theorem, that's 9 plus 16. That's the square root of 25, which is 5. So now you have all three sides. And yes, Mark, I did use the Pythagorean theorem on a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Uh, now we want the cosecant. Cosecant is uh, cosecant is r over y, so it's five fourths. All right. So that's one of those draw the triangle ones. Number nine, another fun one. Find the domain of tangent. All right. Let's put it in standard transformation form. We'll factor out the pi fourths, and that gives us oops, oops. Why pi fourths? I got ahead of myself. First thing I want to do is put the x term first. Ooh, that was a close call. 4 pi x plus pi fourths plus 5. So now we're really factoring out the 4 pi because we're always factoring out the x coefficient. That's x plus. And over here, pi fourths divided by 4 pi is the same as pi fourths times 1 over 4 pi. Those divide out, and you get a sixteenths. And if you redistribute, you see you get 4 pi 16, which is pi 4. So we know that's right. So here's the domain. It's the set of all x, such that x is not equal to. The first critical value is where the vertical tangent is, or the vertical, ta uh, vertical uh, asymptote is for tangent. Uh, we need the period. The period is pi over b. b is 4 pi. So the period is 1 fourth. 
So for tangent and cotangent, we count by half periods. So one half of the period is a half. So that's where your first vertical asymptote is for tangent before a shift. Now we're shifting everything left 1 16th. So we need to subtract a 16th from it. We're moving it left a 16th, so we subtract a 16th. That's your new vertical asymptote. And then plus how often they occur? They occur every period, which is every 1 4th n. Now, I think on the answer choices, I did combine the 1 half and the 1 16th. So let's do that. 1 half minus 1 16th. The common denominator is 16, so I multiply by 8 over 8, and I get 8 minus 1 over 16, so you get uh, 7 sixteenths. So x can't equal, whoa, that didn't work. What's wrong? Uh-oh, uh-oh. That, that's not good when I don't get the, the same answer here. I know it's plus 1 fourth n, so here's what I can do. 1 fourth n, 1 fourth n. The others are 1 half n, and then all reals is no. So I know it's got to be one of those. Uh, haste makes waste, so let's try that again. Uh, did I factor the 4 pi out right? 4 pi times 1 16th is pi uh, fourths. I did that right. Uh, the first critical value is at a half the period. The period is pi over 4 pi, which is a fourth. And half, oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Look at that. Half of a fourth I said is a half. Haste makes waste. You take a half of something by multiplying it by a half. That's one eighth. Silly, silly me. So luckily this was a multiple choice and my answer choice was not there. So the first vertical asymptote is at the first critical value still, but that's at one eighth, not at a fourth. All right, so now 1 8 minus a 16th. Well, that's a little bit easier. Not that the other one was hard. We multiply by 2 over 2, and we get 2 minus 1 over 16, which is 1 16th. So x cannot equal 1 16th plus 1 fourth n. And that's the one I would have picked anyway if I had it down to a 50-50 shot based on how often they occurred. Yeah, right. So anyway, there you go. I'm glad I made the mistake so y'all could see me go back and troubleshoot. Do it right the first time. Be very deliberate uh, in your efforts. Be careful. And because uh, sometimes if you get the wrong answer, your amygdala can fire up. Your reptilian brain takes over and makes it really hard to do math. All right, the next one, inverse tangent of cosine of pi. This one we just worked from the inside out. That's inverse tangent of cosine of pi is negative 1. Now the inverse tangent of negative 1 is going to be of the negative acute angle in quadrant 4 which is negative pi fourths. So that's like what we quizzed over um, on Thursday. Those are a lot of fun. You just practice those and you get better. All right, here's that Big Mac, that triple layer. Work from the inside out. So we got arc cosine of cotangent of, and what's inverse sine of negative one? Well, sine is equal to negative one straight down here at negative pi halves. Now, I wrote the ordered pair at negative pi halves. It's 0, negative 1. That's going to help me on the next layer because I want the cotangent of that. So what's cotangent of negative pi halves? Well, that's x over y. That's 0 over negative 1. That's 0. And now I want the arc cosine of 0. So where is cosine equal to 0? Well, straight up vertically at pi halves. So inch by inch, it's a cinch. And it's fun. One by one, it is fun. All right, another fun one. Arc tangent of square root of 3. So let's focus on that over here. Remember, you can recreate that by putting it over 1. And now multiply by a half over a half. So that must have been your y, and that must have been your x. So your ordered pair was a 1 half square root of 3 halves. That means it's your pi thirds reference angle. So because it's arc tangent of a positive, it's in quadrant one. So that is, in fact, just pi thirds. All right? And, of course, the ordered pair there is one half squared to three halves. And now what's cosecant of pi thirds? Well, cosecant of pi thirds is the reciprocal of the y value there. So that's two over the square root of three, which when you rationalize it is two square root of three thirds. Presto magic. Dang, that was all so fun. I don't know if you can hear my squeaky chair on the video, but it's a squeaking. All right. 
This one looks delightful. Cotangent of inverse tangent. All right. So if that were just tangent of inverse tangent, it would be A. But it's cotangent of inverse tangent. So uh, you could do this the long way. You could draw a little triangle like that. Here's theta. We have the tangent ratio. It's y over x. So that's 1 over 1,000. Now, you don't even need to find the Pythagorean theorem. It's 1 squared plus 1,000 squared square root of it because I want the cotangent ratio. Cotangent is x over y. So that's just 1,000 over 1, which is 1,000. So you probably could have figured that out before you did. I want the cotangent ratio of an angle whose tangent is this. Well, the tangent and cotangent ratios are reciprocal. All right, so that takes care of all the multiple choice questions. And now I want to do the short answer. For the given algebraic expression, find a decomposition into a trig function of an inverse trig function. Show your work and box your final answer. So I'm not going to walk you through the work that's here. I'll just go ahead and write it. And then I'll copy it or cut it out, I guess. And we'll just go down here to a new one. So there are two ways to do this one again. We're decomposing it. So if you want to come over here and draw a little reference triangle, remember you're looking under the radical. That gives you everything you need, the radical term. You see a minus sign right there. That means the 4 must be the hypotenuse squared. The hypotenuse squared is 4. And the other one is the short side squared. Okay? If those were both plus signs under the radical, then uh, we would have um, both of the short side squared, and the hypotenuse would be the radical itself. All right, so now we just need to figure out what is the hypotenuse. Well, it's the square root of 4. It's 2. We'll put it there. And what's the square root of x to the fourth? Well, it's x squared. That's one of the short sides. I'll put it here. Remember, you have the choice to put it vertically or horizontally. Now, the other side is the radical. Okay, so there it is. So now we're going to construct it from the inside. I always want you to do the power of x over the constant. So that's going to be x squared over 2. All right, the first thing you do is you tell me how to get that off of the triangle. Well, that's x over r. That's the horizontal over the hypotenuse. That is your cosine ratio. So we're going to put inverse cosine in front of that. And the last thing you do on the outside is you tell me how then from the same triangle do you get the ratio we want to end up with. Well, that's radical over x squared. That's going to be the y over the x, the vertical over the horizontal, and that's tangent. So we put a tangent here. And that's it. It's that easy. Okay. Remember, let's do this. If you have um, a squared minus b squared, a squared is your hypotenuse squared, and b squared is one of the short sides squared. So the hypotenuse is a, and one of the short sides is b. And then the third side, we'll call it side 2, is the radical itself, a squared minus b squared. The other one is if you have a squared plus b squared. Now a squared is one of the short sides squared, and b squared, oops, B squared is one of the other short side squared. That means that the short side, one of them is A. The short side, one of them is B. And the hypotenuse is the radical itself. And that's it. That's all you got to know. And it comes straight from the Pythagorean theorem. Now, remember, there is another answer here that also works just as nicely. Just replace or take away the co from the two functions you have. So on the outside, I have tangent. Add a co, and you get cotangent. On the inside, I have inverse cosine. Take away the co, and you have inverse sine of x squared over 2. And that could be the answer as well. Okay? Either one of those work. And if you look up here, that's the same answers I have. You can see the point, point distribution. There's going to be five checks for that. So that counts the same as five of your critical values. Um, one for labeling uh, the radical in the right part. One for labeling the other two sides. Um, one for constructing the power of x over the constant. One for listing that from your triangle correctly. And one for getting the ratio that we want to end up with off of that triangle. So there you go. Work this over and over again. Check the key. If you're not sure, watch the video. Replay each problem over and over and over again. It's on YouTube, so you can slow it down if you really want to. 
um, because I know I've been talking fast, but it's 8 o'clock on a a Wednesday night, and I'm sick. So um, y'all have a great tomorrow.